Space Shuttle, this is Flight Safety. Keep your hands on the handrail or inside the vehicle and remain seated while in motion. You are clear for launch. Have a great flight to Starport 75. Hey, Glenn. Hey, Chris. How are you? I'm pretty good. How are you doing tonight? Doing all right. Yeah. Doing all right. I know what we're talking about. I think we have some sort of a traction history that we're doing tonight. Uh, yes, yes. We asked our listeners what kind of show they would prefer, and I mm-hmm. have... I gave three options. One is attraction history. Uh, Mm -hmm. Two was current events or Disney news. Mm -hmm. And three was other. And you tell us. And overwhelmingly, (laughs) the the consensus was everybody wanted to hear attraction history. And and I was it was going to be a surprise. And so uh, they voted without even without even knowing. Okay. Well, I demand a recount. I uh, (laughs) I don't have. I don't have faith in this process. I think it was a fraudulent result. I don't either. <laughs> Quite honestly. <laughs> and it was done over what? Facebook, Twitter. So Twitter, Instagram, mm-hmm. and Facebook. Yes. Yep. Big tech. Yep. I don't trust it. No, no, sir. All right. What are we talking about? I hope it's an attraction I like, because if it's not, I'm going Aww. to Oh. It was going to be Country Bear Jamboree Part 2. Oh, man. I can't wait for that one. I can't. <laughs> part 2. The part shutdown. Du. <laughs> part 2. Electric the killing, Boogaloo. The killing of the bears. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <sighs> all right. All right. So what are we talking about? Come on. The suspense right. is killing me. What are we talking about? All right. So it is, it is an attraction that's still around that is, I would say, underrated, but I believe a lot of people would rank it near the top of their attraction list. It is the Tomorrowland People Mover. Hey, I like that thing. Yeah. The Tomorrowland People Mover. Not always it's uh it's no, name, I guess no. we'll talk about. It. We okay. Will. We will. That is one of my favorite rides. And you're right, a lot of people I've learned like I always thought I was a weirdo because people yeah. like the roller coasters and the or the dark rides or whatever. Uh it is it is kind of like a secret favorite a lot of people, right? It is. It is. I, I think when you ask somebody what their favorite attraction is, they'll they automatically go to one of the one of the roller coasters. But I think if you ask them, it, it's like, oh wait a second, that is a great ride. It's 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 leisurely. It takes you all through the land. There's something about it that that people just really enjoy. Hmm. All right. Well, I can't wait to learn more about it because and that in fact, when you told me that it wasn't operational now during the pandemic and yeah. like that truly changed my plan about like well how much do i want to go to the magic kingdom <laughs> if i can't go in the on the people mover that's true we were we were upset when we went we couldn't go but that's actually what got me thinking about mm, doing okay. a show on the wedway is because i'm like you know what it's it, it'll be down for a long time and we'll talk a little bit about the rumors of why it's down and what what they're planning but let's go through the history first to see what what it's made up of and and the history of it okay now now are you going to be talking about like all the incarnations of the the various wedways so i'm going to yes i'm going to go briefly right. i'm going to touch on the the history the origins of it and then uh, the Disneyland uh, people mover and then but it this is actually mostly about the Walt Disney World people mover well as as god would intend yes all right yeah i got my popcorn got my coke energy let's oh uh, coke energy oh my god i forgot about it all right, you got okay all right gotta... it's coke corner time okay hold on. <laughs> let's see coke corner oh, nice there you go you like There's that one? The, ma- the magical guarna and being here's released. the <laughs> the sound that I hate. The guana. Well, the bad guana is coming out. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yeah, you're not a you're not an ASMR guy. No, I'm not, because I'm talking over it, which is stupid, right? Wait, let's hear the fizz. Yeah. yeah, okay. I can hear. Yeah. Totally get it. Mm, guana. You even get the <laughs> smell. It's like, oh yeah. <laughs> bad guana. So this is the uh cherry. It's the only Coke good one. energy. It's the only one to, to drink. Yeah, I mean the regular's okay, but the cherries, uh, it's good. <sighs> I was I was I was super craving a cherry coke the other day. I don't know what that mm. means. Like you know, they say when you crave you different taste. foods, you mean your body's like uh, uh, needing some sort of chemicals. But uh, cherry mm. coke, for some reason, I was, I was really in it for. Cherry coke is the greatest, but hands right? down. I mean, like there's no comparison. But I think it was the, like even cherries. Like, I'm like, do we have any marshino cherries? I just want to like you know mm. even make my own cherry coke. But, yeah. Anyway, all right, uh, back on topic. All right, okay. so Wedway, People Mover, 
Uh, All right, the way we people mover. Okay, yeah. so if we go back to the very, very origins of this type of ride, it really started uh, during the 64 World's Fair when they were, Walt Disney was asked by the Ford Motor Company to uh, help develop uh, their pavilion for the 64 World's Fair in New York. What they did was they took the Ford Mustangs and they put them on a track. And the way they made them go forward was they had rubber wheels that were sp- that were spun by electric motors, but they were vertical, and so they would be under the car, and they would essentially just keep the cars going, right? So it was just a spinning wheel, a tire, that that propelled the cars forward. Oriented like a regular tire, or more yeah. like mon- monorails gripping the side of something? You know what I mean? The monorails are vertical wheels as well, right? Oh, are they? I was thinking they yeah. were... Must be a different monorail I'm thinking of. Yeah, oh, so okay. oh, right. so for the monorails, if you look at the, the car, if you take off the the middle part, the the gray, mm-hmm. the silver part that allows them to yeah. flex, if you take yeah. that off, there's actually one big wheel that rolls on the top of the monorail beam. Yeah, okay. And then there are smaller wheels, guide wheels on oh, the side. Be, but the actual good. propel yeah. wheels are are vertical. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. All right, so the original 64 thing, it... But it was it kind of like that you're saying? Kind of yeah, yeah. So the the wheels okay. were in the track, right? They were on the <laughs> on the on oh, the track in the track part. Okay. They were propel yeah. the yeah. So the cars would come up to one of the tires, and mm-hmm. it would just keep going, right? Okay. So they said, hey, let's let's put in a, a new attraction in Disneyland called the People Mover, and it basically used the same the same technology. It was the they had cars, and they were propelled along with with the tires as well there. And it was actually sponsored by Goodyear hmm. okay. in Disneyland. So Disneyland's People Mover debuted in 1967, July of 1967. 1967, 68, that's when they started planning for Disney World. And they wanted a People Mover track in Disney World as well. But the original Tomorrowland wasn't quite <laughs> finished. They only had uh, Mission to the Moon and American Journeys when it opened. So Tomorrowland and... And the Grand Prix Raceway. So Tomorrowland, Wait, American Journeys. What was that? The 360 movie on the right, where oh, okay. Monsters right. Inc. is now. Oh, okay. All right, I didn't know that's what it was called. Okay, cool. Yeah. So they 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 only had those two attractions and the Grand Prix Raceway. So what we know as Tomorrowland now with the the Star Jets and Carousel Progress, obviously, and Space Mountain. None of that was there. The Tomorrowland wasn't much of a land when. Disney World open. Hmm. Okay. Now, can I ask a, 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 a I know you're moving on. I yeah. never know what to ask because you yeah. might cover it anyway. So Disneyland, it, interesting, like I never, I never separated out. So that track didn't exist at Disneyland. It did not. Because like you're going to talk about how it's kind of integrated at parts of, of Disney World. Correct. So they actually built an elevated track, I guess, to create it for Disneyland, right? Yeah. Making one. Now, does Disneyland go through any attractions or just kind of goes around uh, around the land? Yeah, no, so it, it went through, Disneyland's went through, it was much longer, and mm. it went through a lot more of the land, and it 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 cuts, I'm trying to think if it cuts over or under the monorail track. So, it, I mean, there's different, ele- in, in Disneyland, it's, there's actually different elevations of the people mover track. Oh, so it goes okay. up and and uh, down hills and and uh, and it goes it did I know it it went and you see you're trying to get me because <laughs> I didn't do the Disneyland research as well. Much. No, that's okay. But it's, no, I know it went later. through Adventures Through Inner Space, which is now Star Tours. Oh, okay. uh, so it did go through that building, and that's mm-hmm. actually where <laughs> they in the 80s when Tron came out. That's mm-hmm. where they had the Tron, you know, when he gets sucked into the computer, that animation. Yeah. They had that. And so on the People Mover, it looked like you were going through the world of Tron. Oh, oh. So. Very cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Man, All right. Didn't mean to, I didn't mean to <laughs> derail you. <laughs> I had to uh, go way deep into the <laughs> memory banks sorry, for that I, one. I expect you to have all this uh, right off the top of your head. But yeah. Okay. All right. All right, so now it's time for Disney World. And so they <laughs> planned right. it. And so you're right, at Disney World, they built the the tracks into the building for on the side for Mission to the Moon and then on the American Journey side. The, the track that we see today, that was there. That was built into the buildings, but it just ended mm. <laughs> because they didn't have anything else built. Mm. So the original plan was to have... 
to actually have the load be inside of Space Mountain. So you would go to Space Mountain, and that's where you would board the people mover. Really? Okay. Yeah. So when they're planning for Space Mountain, and they said, hey, we can't fit this. We want it to be bigger than we have it in Disneyland, what they were planning for Disneyland. And they're like, we have a lot of land. So they moved where they were going to build Face Mountain to outside the berm. So outside of the train track. Okay. So and that wasn't the original plan? It was going to be inside? No, it was going to be inside. Oh, wow. And okay. Yeah. So so they moved it out. <laughs> and so they said, well, okay, we can't have the people mover station there then. All right. So that's when they decided, okay, we're going to do like we did in Disneyland and build the star jets and that'll be the load and unload area for the people mover. Okay. Good decision. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense now, but <laughs> I think they were thinking more because originally Space Mountain was it, it was envisioned as a space port where I think they were thinking it would be bigger and have more to it than just the roller coaster, like maybe have some other shops or some other attractions tied into mm. it. OK, but then they said, oh, no, let's just keep it. Just a roller coaster and we'll put everything else inside uh, Tomorrowland. OK, well, that makes sense for Starport then. OK. Yeah, get it. So Space Mountain still does hold. That's where the garage and the maintenance areas are. Those mm -hmm. are in Space Mountain, and I right. think you, you know, you can kind of see that as you're coming out of the Space Mountain on the ride. If you look back quick, there's a door, so that's where that is. Okay, so the big difference between Disneyland's People Mover and Disney World's People Mover was. That it was going to use a vastly different technology. Mm -hmm. So what they did in Disney World was they used linear induction motors in the track, which are solid state. And there are no, the only moving parts on, are on the train and there, there are only wheels. So there's no, okay. there's no tires moving. Yeah, the, and those, those wheels are more... Um, alignment and cushion than actually um, motion, right? They're That's not correct. Propelling, they're not propelling the, uh, the the things. Correct, correct. Right. All right, so linear induction, Glenn, those are big words. What they does that are, mean? I know. What, what <laughs> so, does that mean and, and why did they do that? So basically, linear induction motors are, it's basically magnets, right? So every, yeah. every train, every car <laughs> has a metal plate on the bottom of it that is yep. attracted to the linear induction motors when they're turned on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens is there are these motors are 10 feet apart on all throughout the track. There are 630 of them. Oh, wow. Okay. So it ensures that there are four motors always under each five car train. Hmm. Okay. The motors themselves have proximity sensors to tell where the train is. Hmm. And what happens is once it's tripped, then it that's when the motor turns on to pull it towards the motor. Hmm. Okay. And then it turns off and it and the the train just keeps going and then the next motor will turn on and pull it towards it. So it's basically pulling the the train along. Yeah, I never knew it not that it matters, but just from a uh, geeky nerdy standpoint, I never knew if it was if the magnets were like pushing it or pulling it forward, but it sounds like you're saying they they kind of pull it along. They do. They pull it and then if they have to shut down, they reverse the polarity and yeah, that, that they actually do push it at that point for a millisecond to, to mm -hmm. stop the cars. While you're talking, I'm trying to see if I can find a picture of what these things look like. They're probably not very impressive, right? Just a little box or something. Yeah. Just a box. Um, yeah. yeah, pretty much. Oh yeah. You can see them on the track when you go. Over them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I see. Okay. Cool. Which, which at that time, you know, we're talking early seventies, late sixties, mm -hmm. depending on when they first started kind of planning for this. This was super high tech for back then, right? Which in and in line yeah. with, you know, Disney's kind of uh, love for transportation and technology and new things. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, today it's fairly common in, in like high speed rails and stuff, right? The, uh, right. the TGV. Yes, yeah, used a lot of places. I'm curious if they use this in any other rides. I'm trying to remember right now. But, yeah, it's cool tech. It is. It is. And makes you wonder why the, why the monorails aren't uh, kind of the same thing. I'm sure there's some good reason. but maybe. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a great question because some of the benefits of these linear induction motors is that, in theory, they're supposed to have an unlimited life expectancy. They, they really shouldn't break yeah, down or anything. No, there's no real, like you said, there's solid, solid state. There's no right. moving parts, that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, and they, you know, environmental, uh, heat and dust and wind, moisture, they don't have any, it doesn't affect 
the the motors. Right. You would think that this type of system would be used even within Disney World would be used more in different right. applications, but it's it's yeah. really not. Hmm. And I'll, I'll get to in a second kind of what they were trying to do with it. But let's let's finish up with the current ride right now. Sure. Hey, before you do though, because I'm looking I'm looking at pictures as as you're going through this. You weren't kidding about the Ford thing at the sixty four World's Fair. The, they're actual cars that are like yeah. on a track. Like I thought I thought they were like mocked up, but these are like real real Ford cars that people were sitting in, right? Yeah. Well, cool. hey, I had no idea that's uh, that was its origins. That's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So All right, a couple more little technical things. The system can have up to 50% linear induction motor failure at random positions and still function fine. Hmm. Okay. Because there are four that are underneath the car at all times, mm-hmm. they can still yeah. move. So, and then the speeds go between 1.8 miles per hour to 6.8 miles per hour. Yeah, boy, when it kicks up to that six miles per hour, you can really feel that, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not joking. It feels like it's like a real, uh, like when it takes off, right? Like, cause it's it going does. slower while it's in the, in the port. Yeah. And then it takes off as it, as it exits, right? It feels mm-hmm. like you're like somebody just floored. It. Well, it does. Cause you're outside and there's nothing, there's no yeah. windshield or anything. So you do, right. you really do feel it. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. No, I know. Yeah. Is that top speed? Can they crank those things up higher? Do you know? I actually, I, I read that. I didn't, I don't know why I didn't put that in my notes. <laughs> it's okay. Because that, that was the question I had. I was like, oh, is that the top speed? <laughs> How or? fast could it go? <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Right. They have 30 trains. They can carry 3,600 guests per hour. Wow. Really? Okay. Yeah. So it's it, that's why there's usually, usually not a line. But with- Well, you say that, and there didn't used to be. And that's why I I, uh, I, I used to love it so much, because it was always just walk on. We'd, we'd uh, sneak on a frozen Coke, because uh, you're not supposed to have any beverages on there. Um, but we grab a frozen Coke, uh, Coke at the, uh, at the launch pad or somewhere. And, uh, um, but now I guess, you know, post, uh, fast pass, I almost forgot what it's called. That's how long it's been since I've been to a Disney park, yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, fast, pa- fast pass. Uh, there's a line now. It seems like there's always a line. I don't know yeah. what that's, I mean, it moves fast yeah. cause you got that nice Goodyear ramp. Uh, that's if right. it doesn't, Speed if it doesn't kill you. Yeah. If it doesn't kill you, then, uh, get you up there pretty quick. <laughs> All right. So it opened in on July 1st, 1975. Hmm, okay. And it opened as an e-ticket attraction, which is a high, Yeah, e-ticket really? attraction and stayed wow. that way until the fall of 1976 uh-huh. and it moved down to a D. Well, it was demoted. Okay. It was, it was. But I mean, that's still a D ticket is like Yeah, it's nothing nothing to sneeze at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I wonder what what kind of motivations Disney at that time had for changing the categorization of rides, whether it was guest feedback or trying to rebalance where people are going, you know, like Yes, I believe all of that. Yeah, probably those things. Right. Every ride was paid for, right? So right. they could literally track where oh, true. Revenue was coming in True. for every single attraction. And so, yes, uh, I'm sure okay. it was a, they looked at it every now and then and said, hey, what, how how do we even this out? How do we make more money? Uh, Can we move something else up to an e-ticket? And, or would more people ride it if it was less and we can mm-hmm. j- build up the revenue by quantity? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Interesting. It was originally sponsored by the Edison Electrical Institute. <laughs> that sounds made up, but okay. Isn't that the thing that does like a uh, journey into imagination? Isn't that the, isn't that that thing over there? That institute? <laughs> no, isn't that an institute? The, uh, no, no, it's not. It was sponsored by them for 10 years so from 75 to 85. Mm. And actually, if you go through today, the Progress City model, mm-hmm. yep. that is the original Progress City model that was at the World's Fair, 1964 World's Fair within the Carousel of Progress. Mm. Yeah. I, ju- I just recently relearned that that's an actual like museum quality kind of thing. I thought it was yeah. like a reproduction or something, but yeah. Yeah, no, that's Walt Disney saw that thing and yeah. Yeah. Hmm. at the World's Fair and then when it moved the Castle of Progress moved from the World's Fair to Disneyland, that's why in Disneyland it's two stories there because you would go in and you would watch the show and then you exited and then you would be taken to the Progress City model and and that was the problem. That was like, okay, oh, this okay. is what the future is going to bring through GE. And mm-hmm. you could see the model. So this is the model that was actually part of the Carousel of Progress from mm-hmm. the very beginning. Very cool. Yeah. It didn't quite work out that way, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> no, it didn't. It did. <laughs> very cool. When you go through that part, the Progress City, mm-hmm. yep. there's actually, you can see it in the glass. It says, the city of tomorrow is a great electric machine 
working for you. Yeah. Okay. Huh. And that was part of their sponsorship, I guess. And yes. And so there's something up behind that glass that's yeah. just turning. It's probably just hardwired in and people are like, I don't know how to turn that off. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I didn't know that. All right. So for the first 10 years, that was a sponsorship and the narration was done by Jack Wagner. You know who he is? Mm. Oh, yeah. For sure. The narration changed. Nothing else changed on it, but the narration changed in 1985 once the sponsorship ended, and it ran until 1994, so another 10 years. Narrated by ORAC-1, the commuter computer. <laughs> Do you okay. remember that? Uh, so 85 vague. to 94. Yeah, vague. I think I know more of it because that was that was in my uh, uh, the dark times. But yeah. Mm, yeah. Then in 94, they rethemed all of Tomorrowland. Yeah. It had to close for the construction of Alien Encounter. Mm, there, there was money. money Timekeeper. Well <laughs> Timekeeper. And they redid the visual look of the whole land. So mm-hmm. uh, right. when it opened, it uh, opened with a new narration that was done by Peter Renaday. And that's the one that I think you are the most familiar with because it ran sure. from June 94 until October of 2009. So yep, that's the one burned in my brain. Another much. 15 years or so. Mm-hmm. Yep, many rides in that time. Yep, and at that time, it was changed from the Wedway People Mover to the Tomorrowland Transit Authority. Yeah, I wasn't a fan of that, but uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah, Is it not called that now? Let's, uh, well, maybe you're getting to that. Well, yeah, so, okay. Uh, so it was the Tomor- Tomorrowland Transit Authority, and it was the Metro Liner Blue Line. <laughs> Okay, implying <laughs> implying there was a red or a green somewhere. Well, that was the idea, right? Is that yeah, Tomorrowland right. was this this whole city, and right, yeah, right, there right. were other colors and all that. Okay, yeah, sure. So yeah. in two thousand nine, it was the narration was changed to the current spiel by Mike Brussel, and it harkens back to the Oric One spiel and tone. Oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Yep, because it didn't it didn't seem to change all that much, if I remember. I'm, I mean, it's hard for me to tell what's just stuck in my brain and what's actual happening. Yeah. Now, but. I, well, so the 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 one the ninety four to two thousand nine one it was more uh, in line in keeping with the theme of the land of uh, this futuristic place that's right. fictional kind of sure. where so the narration before that and the one today is more factual of oh hey here you're passing uh, that's true. by that's true. Space Mountain so. So, yeah, so that's been it since 2009, which is, wow, 11 years already? God, I can't believe that. Good Lord. Yeah, which, which I don't know which you prefer, um, but to me, that, that one that I know the best, mm-hmm. I liked it better because it did have that sort of immersion into a story. Mm-hmm. Like, the current one is just kind of like, it seems a little bland or a little like somebody yeah. just reading facts to you, like you said. But yeah, I, I, I mean, of course, I'm going to be different. I do yeah. like the current one because because okay. I remember Orac One, and that okay. was a huge yeah. part of my childhood. And uh, when I moved there, uh, that that whole part of my life. So I, I like the current because of that. Hmm. I got to find a. Uh, I got to listen to a recording of the first one. I don't know if I've ever. I have heard a that. recording. Oh, I'm sure you do. <laughs> That I recorded. I used to bring my cassette recorder <laughs> ah, with me. Such a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> and I would, yes. So I have a few recordings of it. Well, but I, it's, I, it's Well, fun. then put it up on YouTube. I want to hear it. I need to, well, so I need to get a, I don't have a cassette player. Oh, wow. So that's okay. my that's my problem right now. I mean, if only there was a way to find one. I know, uh, I know. So I don't understand. What, Oric One yeah. was the, like, it was speaking to you? Like you're, like you're, like you're. I guess I just gotta listen to it. I don't okay, I'll, I'll I'll find some. I'll, I'll I'll plug it in here. Hi, Orac One at your service. Now I'm programmed to be your guide on this people mover tour of Tomorrowland. You might say I'm sort of a commuter computer. Have you noticed this one way people mover car doesn't have an engine? Well, you see, these vehicles travel quietly and with no air pollution on a system of linear induction motors. As you just heard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nicely done. Pro move right there, buddy. 
it was it was uh, hey i'm uh, i'm Oric one your commuter computer and oh, okay. I'll, I'll tell you you know whatever all right, so August 5th, 2010, they didn't do it at the same time. Uh, about a year later, they changed the name to the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. So wow. Tomorrowland Transit Authority is still, I think, technically part of the name, but they brought back the, the actual name of People Mover. So that's, that's weird, but okay. But I actually, I kind of, well, no, but it's missing the important part, which is the Wedway. Like, did you did you mention to the folks what, what oh, like, about that? Not. Well, Glenn, come on. What's what's Wedway all about? Because I see that mentioned. That was the original name, right? The Wedway People that Mover. Was. Back in, yeah. So what's that? That's a funny name. What's that mean? It is. It is. So Wedway, Wed is Walter Elias Disney. Yeah. Now it makes sense. Now yeah, it makes Wedway. sense. Wedway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Wed was um was a big part of the theme park evolution, right? Wasn't that sort of his think tank engineering something something like? You know what I mean? I, yes. My words are failing me today, but... Yeah, it was so Imagineering we, before Imagineering. There we go. Uh, well said, well said. So I, I'm assuming maybe this means the technology for this kind of came out of that out of that group at the time, I'm guessing. Yes, it yeah. did. Okay. See, I can figure things out. Yeah. Cool. Now, so it really should be the Wedway Tomorrowland Transit <laughs> Authority People Mover. It's, yeah, should be it its should. full It's full and rightful name. That's right. All right. Okay. That kind of brings us to today as far as the Wedway. So in, in as we record this in 2020, the Wedway People Mover went down, closed when the, the parks closed earlier in the year. And they haven't opened, even though the parks opened in July, the Wedway is still closed. And there's been rumors that we've seen. And they, they had a couple issues not long before the parks closed. One was that the the speed ramp, I don't know if it caught on fire or but there was a lot of smoke <laughs> and they had to shut everything down. So it was closed for a little while for that. They I think they fixed it. Which that which that ramp and maybe there's just not much they can do about it today. I don't I don't remember if I've mentioned this before. But every time I'm on that thing, it surprises me that that's still the conveyance <laughs> to get on and off because it just seems so, if not dangerous, certainly not um, uh, OSHA compliant or whatever, yeah. you know. Uh, I guess they have other means for like folks in wheelchairs and stuff to get up. No? Um, what's the, what's I don't the know. No? I don't know. I don't, I don't I've never so. seen any. I've never seen like. Because I've, it's I've a moving wheelchair too. There. Yeah, you're right. So like, maybe, maybe you don't have a can't... small amount of time to get in the car. They don't. Yeah, that does that stress you out? It always stresses me out. Oh, it I'm stresses. Like, of course, it does. N- not so much getting on the ride, but when you're getting off, because it yeah. seems like the thing is just going to, you know, uh, eat you alive when if you're not off the uh, the ramp. Right. Time. Hey, have you ever stayed on like to ride again? Like you're just like, hey, we're going to take yes. another run. We've oh. yes, we've done that before. I know when I went as kids with the youth group or, and stuff like that. Late at night, and sure. cast members couldn't care less if there's nobody waiting. So, <laughs> right. Oh, right. yeah, stay on. Who yeah, cares? my wife and I used to do it. Huh. Okay. Sorry. I interrupted you again. So, the, uh, so it's under refurbishment, maybe. Well, yeah. But- so, so that happened. And then there was another incident where the cars stopped. And so, even though these linear induction motors appear to be to be able to work forever, it doesn't seem to be the actual case. <laughs> so, hmm. The, the rumor is that they are going to replace all of the linear induction motors in the track. All but, 630 of them. Yeah, exactly. And so mm-hmm. the problem is in 2020, it's tough to get those because they are there was delays in manufacturing and everything else. So hmm. as of right now, it's, it's going to be closed through, I think, at least January of next year. But it's kind of fluid. They keep updating the close through date or the reopening date on the website, mm, okay. keep pushing it back. So that's the rumors that they're going to replace all the uh, motors. Hmm. Yeah. It'd be fascinating to know the details about that. Like, is it like something that anybody with uh, not anybody, but you know, a company that knows how to build stuff. Like, I wonder how proprietary right. that is, or if they just have to like hand that to somebody and say, can you make this? Like, and they go, hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hmm. Okay. So that's uh, that's the Wedway. But before we leave the subject entirely, just want to continue on with what Disney was trying to do with this technology. We touched on it a little bit earlier. Walt Disney created a separate company called the Community Transport Services under WED, under Imagineering, to promote it in real-world situations. So they were trying to sell this as a new business. Hmm. 
Interesting. So the first the first one that they were going to build outside of the theme park was actually going to be for themselves. They were going to put it in the Walt Disney World Village, which is now Disney Springs. Right. So it would go all through the the village. It would go through the hotel plaza. And then there was a planned office park where, um, I don't know what it's called now, but uh, it was SunTrust. They had a SunTrust building there, a hmm. uh, bank there. That was that was built, but that was the only office building built. They, they were going to have more. So anyway, it was going to go on a loop that was all through the village. It was going to be a pretty big loop. No, it's a shame, that, shame they didn't. But, yeah. Right. And then they were going to tie it in to... What would be what would become the monorail, uh, the Epcot monorail line? The monorail would actually go further south from Epcot to meet up with the village and the People Mover Station. You would get off the monorail kind of at the northern end of the village, so Mm -hmm. kind of where the west side is. So it's but it's actually northwest anyway. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not going to talk directions at Disney (laughs) because. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so anyway, so the monorail would go there and then the Wedway station would go underneath it and you would get off the monorail there and you would go down a level and then get on one of the Wedway cars and it would take you over to the village or where, or to the hotels out there or wherever you needed to go. Well, then surely that those would have to pick up some speed because that's, that's a lot of ground to cover. Yeah. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, it would. But uh, yeah. and once again, I don't know the actual yeah. top speed. Now, now we'll never so, know. No, we won't. So that, that was kind of cool, uh, but at the time, this was the mid-70s, Disney started cutting back on their plans for development, and this was one of the casualties. Mm. So that's why they did not build this out. Hmm. But they kept trying to sell it, and so they actually found a customer, and the customer was the Houston airport. Oh, okay. So they installed it in the airport in 1979, mm-hmm. and it links the terminals and hotel. And is that still a thing? Is still and a it is still a thing. Wow. There are rumors that they're looking to replace it, really get rid of it, and, and put in something else. But it is still, today, you can go to the Houston airport and ride a Wedway. Hmm, that's really impressive. I didn't yeah. know that. They're enclosed. Okay. They're enclosed cars. Yeah, and that's what, the other thing I was thinking is if they were going to do those long runs, then I guess they would have had to have been enclosed for that, too. Yeah. Whatever the plan was. Hmm. Okay. Disney sold the Community Transport Services Division to Bombardier. Is that how you say it? I always get that wrong. Yeah, if you're an American, sure. Okay, there you go. And then they installed one. (laughs) Uh, They found a customer, the United States government. (laughs) Everybody's favorite customer. (laughs) So they (laughs) they installed a Wedway that links the Capitol to the Dirksen and Hart buildings in 1993. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, and once again, it's enclosed as well. But uh, so there are two... Active Wedway systems outside of Walt Disney World. That is crazy. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. seen some video. Seen some video of the uh, the Houston one. Yeah, the train. The train looks nothing like it. And the, no, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. But yeah, the technology is there. Huh. Yeah, man. I, you know, like so many people, I really loved Walt's fascination and love for transportation. That really, yeah. Which is, you know, whatever. Not to open old wounds, but. That's why I like that they were at least doing something with the uh, the gondolas and stuff because it's something something new from a transportation standpoint. But hey, look at that! Yeah, this video I'm seeing the little blocks that it runs over look just like the blocks on the uh, the yeah, Wedway track. Yeah. See hey, that? Hey. I just checking to make sure you were you were giving facts straight. Oh, you should because who knows what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, you can see there's really not much to this system, right? Other than those little those little motors. So, yeah. Well, obviously these have been running a long time. So yeah, huh? And it's a nice smooth ride, right? Because it's running on, I don't know, magic and air. Well, that's, I think that's, <laughs> in my research, that's kind of what I've seen. And, and that's why they, I think they're looking to replace it because it's not that smooth. It's kind of rough. Yeah, you um, know, as we were talking about this, I said earlier that uh, some of the high-speed trains use this. But, but no, they're using like maglev. Uh, so I think I was a little wrong with this. But yeah. uh, hmm, which which do kind of. Push them up off the tracks, not not off the tracks, but you know what I mean. Like, uh, yeah, sure, le- less friction. More. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. There's rougher rides at Disney, like I don't know something. Oh, Space Mountain, man! I tell you yeah, what, they Space Mountain. they yeah, rebuilt right. Space Mountain in well, I think 2007. They essentially completely 
disassembled and reassembled it with new mm -hmm. track. And I rode that thing in, uh, <laughs> you know, in September, man. And, uh -huh. or, well, we rode it in January. Yeah. And it was like, oh my God, man. It not, it not my teeth loose, I think. Yeah, I don't think they have like a softer steel that they can kind of cushion it with. I think that's the problem. Man. Oh, no, no. It is rough. I, but I remember being a kid and thinking what a, what a rough ride that was. But like you go on Rock and Roller Coaster and it's super smooth. Yeah, well, come on. Different eras, man. No, just saying. Mm. That's it for Wetway. Man, yeah, I for like now. it. Can't My wait till it rides. opens back up. If, like, right? Oh, it will. It'll, it'll open. Yeah, well, okay. Well, actually, I'm surprised... Um, I know you're focusing mostly on Disney World, but uh, yeah. like there was like, and maybe it's just because when I was paying attention to it, but there was a giant brouhaha in the in the Disney verse when they switched from the Wedway to the Rocket Rods at Disney oh, World. Oh God, yeah, that like that. Uh, maybe maybe it's just you don't count that as Wedway, but um, and I don't yeah. remember how the how the um, like the tracks ran whether it was the same thing or not, but they tried to they tried to turn the Wedway in Disneyland the people mm -hmm. mover whatever into like a like a thrill ride, right? Kind mm -hmm. of quasi. Right yep. with the yep. rocket rods, yeah, and that was a dismal failure from yep. from every, and I think they broke a lot and uh, oh my god, yeah, and uh, so what they essentially just shut that down, right? There's no there's no yep. way running there today, right? No, and it's it's very depressing because it, that thing opened. They switched it over, I think in '98 when they redid their Tomorrowland. It may have opened like in 2000, somewhere in there, but it it only ran. It was only open for. Uh, I don't know if it hit a year. I mean, maybe a year, but it was Is down it was? a lot of the time. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it was a, they had to close it quick. Yeah, it was in the, it was like 96, 97-ish, 98, kind of in that range, because that's when I was paying most attention to all that stuff. Yeah. So I think that's when it started, somewhere in there. Yeah, but it wasn't around. It's a shame, because that, I think most of the track is still there, <sighs> right? But it's just kind of... yeah. Just so, there. And not so used. that's the sad thing, is so we went in 2016 with the family, and... The track is there. Like the whole thing is just there, <laughs> sitting there. And yeah. so either either take it down or do something with it. Like yeah. it's just sitting there taunting you. Yeah. Do you think people that don't know the history of that would would recognize that as something missing? Or is it just like, man, eh, it just seems like whatever yeah, decoration and, and Exactly. I think it's it's because it doesn't have like a Disney World, it has the roof. Right? Right. Right. There's no roof. So if you look at it, you could say, Okay, well, I guess it's just futuristic shape design right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. but yeah so uh, yeah i mean i guess that's why they leave it because it's just not worth the the, yeah, the hundreds of millions demolition of take it yeah down. yeah hmm. you know what they should just do is just leave that park closed i mean it's been down this long just just leave disneyland closed like so silly. solve that problem like what do we need that for hmm they they really should put because and Iger actually kind of hinted that it might be coming back the people mover, but nothing's ever been done. It seems like, a, I mean, I don't know, obviously, anything about anything, but it seems like it would be a relatively inexpensive attraction to bring back online. And at least you can you claim, think. like, you have another thing, another thing right. for people to do. Right. They already have the track there, and I'm assuming, you know, 630-ish motors. So, maybe yeah. more. Well, hmm. I mean, it, yeah. I mean, I think they took all that out for the rocket rods, right? Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. So well, whatever then, technology okay. they were using for that is still no. there. But, you rockets. know. Rockets. They were using rockets. I, I think you would, I think people would jump for joy if they reintroduce the people mover. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and like I said, it seems like it's a lot more popular than I realized. Yeah. I thought I was just uh, the weirdo, but it turns out lots of other weirdos. Nope. Cool. All right. One of my favorites. Thanks mm -hmm. for thanks for all your research. No problem. All right. Is that a show? Is that a wrap? I think that's it. All right. I'm going to go get a cherry Coke, frozen Coke, and uh, <laughs> roll on up to the Wedway and uh, listen to the spiel. You know what else? The other part I like, too, is when it when it turns the corner and you just get that brief glimpse of the uh, of the castle. Like yeah, sometimes when sure. it's like sunset and whatever, it's just a really nice view right there. Yep. that's uh, I could ride that thing all, all day long. I yeah, know. So. Me, too. Hmm. Cool. All right. All well, right. We'll see you next time, then. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Starport 75. Follow Chris on Twitter and Instagram at CB Gray and Glenn on Twitter and Instagram at Dizwiz. Follow the show on Twitter and Facebook at Starport 75 and Instagram at the Starport 75. For all things related to the show, including show notes and links to connect with us, visit us at starport75.com.